I think I'm live. Um, evening, everyone. Um, my live tonight is about um, a beautiful woman um, whose name was called Sasha Samsudin, um, who was brutally murdered in her um, own apartment um, by someone who she should have felt safe and protected by um, living there. So I'm going to get straight into my live. Um, I'm going to turn this off and go straight into Sasha Samsudin's story. Um, Sasha Samsudin was born in 1988. Start again. Sasha Samsudin was born in 1988. Sasha was the daughter to Ken and Tara Samsudin. Growing up, Sasha would always, I'm gonna just turn up my volume a little bit. Growing up, Sasha would always be bubbly and she loved to like sing and dance and she enjoyed learning. She loved like educating herself in and out of school. At high school, Sasha danced for the Dazzlers dance team. And would like go and watch Orlando soccer games with friends. In 2006, Sasha grad graduated from high school and went straight into the University of Florida. I'm just gonna show a few more photos. I haven't got that many this evening. There's Sasha there. She was so smart and she had like, like she was so intelligent, such an intelligent, beautiful woman behind her bubbly, like character um i'm gonna show you some more photos of sasha yeah right back to my story hello dj heaven i hope you're okay big love to you thank you for popping in um so yeah so sasha would um like just love educating herself and when Sasha gra graduated from um, university um, she took a job part-time and this was um, a firm called Pearson's for the educational services and then from her part-time job she was then offered the manageress job for managing their social media accounts. Sasha was so good at her job. She was just like, she would just, she would just know, like just know what she was doing. And like, she was just brilliant. Just like, you know, her work just like had nothing but praise for Sasha. I'm going to show another photo, just quickly as well. There's Sasha there um, doing her um, social media. Um, Sasha also gave her kind hearts to charities, volunteering, giving her free time whenever she could to charities. And also in 2012, Sasha was named Accountant Executive of the Year at the AAGS Golden Key Awards. Sasha was so bubbly and so sociable in and out of work. Sasha would like work all, all week like put all her hard time into her work through the week 
and enjoy herself at, at weekends sociably, work hard, play hard, so they say. I'm going to change the photo. Hello, Nap Nap. First time here. Hello, big hello to you. Thank you for popping in. I'm so glad you're doing well, DJ Heaven. Um, so true. Donna, my beautiful sis, how are you, beautiful? Um, yeah, so, so like Sasha was so bubbly and so sociable and like she would love like catching up at the weekends with her friends and like enjoying her sociable time with them as she was working hard in the week and on the 17th of October in 2015, Sasha being 27 year, years old then, Sasha and her friends, sorry, I'm my notes, went out in the day to watch Orlando City soccer game play. They had such a great time there that their team won so they carried on enjoying the mood by going out to the attic nightclub i've just going to change the photo so they changed the mood by going out to the attic nightclub Sorry about my laptop, the plane's going off again. Um, Anthony, Anthony and Sasha, Anthony was Sasha's friend and that's who she went to the soccer game with. And um, this would be something that Asha and um, Anthony and Sasha would do um, every weekend. They would go to like clubs on an evening, and if one of them wasn't feeling the mood in that club, they would sort of like leave, leave each other and then like maybe meet back up at like the end of the night or the next day. So around about 12.30 a.m., Sasha said to Anthony, um, I'm going to leave now um, and I'll see you later. And like they gave their goodbyes and sort of said like, you know, catch you later sort of thing. And Anthony, her friend, just didn't think any more of it really until the next day. So Anthony and Sasha, they were meant to be meeting for breakfast the next day being the 18th of, I've got to get my dates right because I get my dates and my dogs up. Yeah, being the 18th of um, October 2015, um, they were meant to meet for breakfast and Anthony sort of sat waiting for Sasha and she just didn't sort of like arrive. So he thought, oh, maybe like she's overslept, she had like... Um, you know, from the night before, she sort of like carried on partying, so she's overslept. And sorry, my um girl's done what she normally does, goes to the toilet. Yeah, I'm gonna change the photo while I'm sorting her out. So yeah. So um Anthony sort of went on and got um, another two of like his and Sasha's friends and they um, ended up at Sasha's apartment and they noticed that like Sasha's car was still in like her parking plot in the garage bit and they noticed that um, 
there was still like baby shower gifts still in the car that she was meant to have attended like a couple of hours before. Um, so I'm going to change the photo, sorry. Um, yeah, so um, Anthony and their friends in, in these sort of apartments, they're run by security guards and you have to have a code to be able to get into the front entrance and the back entrance. And you also have to have a code to be able to get into your apartment door as well as a key. So what Sasha's friends done, Anthony, and the other two lady friends that were with Anthony, they, um, they snuck in. So as a resident left the building, they, they snuck in through like the back door. I'm just going to change the photo. No. So they went round the back and they snuck in as a residence left the building. Hello, Lynx. How are you, mate? I hope you're okay. Um, so when they arrived at Sasha's apartment door, I'm just going to change the photo again because I'm just left it like that's the back of the building. Such a beautiful apartment, you know, like and. Um, I haven't got that many photos tonight. So when they arrived at Sasha's um, door, um, as you can see, you have to have a code and a key to sort of get in. Um, they kept sort of like knocking and they were getting like no response. And they kept calling their name and they just couldn't like, they couldn't even hear like anything in her apartment, but they knew you know, this is where they sort of knew, like, something just wasn't right because Sasha was the sort of, like, woman that loved her social media. She was always on there from the minute she went to sleep, from the minute she woke up. She was, she, she worked for social media. She just, you know, she would have responded and and this is when her friend anthony just knew something wasn't right and this is when after ringing like hospitals and like uh, in america you know there's there's jails that you can get arrested for the night and stuff he rang all around there and it, it, like no one had seen her or she hadn't been admitted so he then rung 911 and he explained that he'd run around and um, he wanted to report his friend missing. Sorry, right, do I need to change the photo? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, sorry, everybody. I've gone from off my notes and just said <laughs> how it is really. Um, yeah, so um, okay, so the police arrived and um, they were approached by a security guard that was actually working. And the security guard explained to the police, you know, there has to be a security guard on premises 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We work in shifts here. Um, hello, Jake. How are you, sweetie? I hope you're OK. Um, so, yeah, so, the, so he sort of like explained to the police and he also explained to the police that there was CCTV cameras in the um, building complex and um, the cameras were on each floor. So the police um, got to um, Sasha's apartment and they got into like Sasha's apartment and at first everything seemed to be to them seemed to have been like you know everything was normal nothing had been moved or you know anything like that and then one of the police officers um went into Sasha's bedroom and 
and saw Sasha um, covered in a blanket and Sasha's arm and some of her hair was laying on one out of one side of the blanket or over the bed. When the police officer pulled the blanket from Sasha, he noticed that Sasha had marks, strangulation marks on her neck. And they could then see that there was like obvious signs of strangulis strangulization. They also found um, Sasha's necklace that had been tangled in Sasha's hair, indicating signs of a struggle when Sasha was murdered. Sasha lived alone and on further investigation, the police noticed that there was no signs of forced entry and her toilet seat was left up, indicating that a male had been there. They also smelt strong like cleaning chemicals in and around Sasha like in Sasha's apartment and on Sasha's body. When they got to Sasha's cleaning cupboard, it was left wide open and they also found fingerprints on the toilet seat and DNA on Sasha's body. And there was also a shoe print that was left on the floor in the bathroom. And change um, the photo. Sasha's phone and keys and purse was also missing. And when medical examiner reported back, he reported that Sasha had been raped she had severe heavy bruising around her chest and a fractured late lyrax and a lyrax is the hollow muscular organ forming like the air passage to the lungs to the vocal cords um so to me poor sasha you know was probably screaming for help at that time. Um, Sasha's body was covered in lots of cleaning fluids and had been, the cause of Sasha's death was strangulation. The police noticed Sasha's laptop was still in her apartment. And as her phone was missing, they they knew that there was like the app where you could like back up your iPhone to like your phone to like your laptop and it did her phone so all the messages and phone calls and photos that Sasha had done and sent was all backed up on her laptop and they noticed that the last text that Sasha um, messaged was to a man called Ben at 5 a.m. that morning, but it was only saying Ben, the message. The police interviewed Sasha's friends from the night before to see like where they were and to see how their like night, like how their night was and you know basically to sort of get information on what happened the night before um, they were interviewed and <clears throat> from their interview the police then went on to check the street cctv to see if they could see any footage of like anyone following sasha home when she left the attic nightclub or 
to see if she'd like got into a car. Um, and they also asked the security guard who 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 was on on the night and requested the CCTV from the building, but the CCTV be from the building would take a few days as it was all backed up in another um in another place so they had to wait for that to be downloaded to receive that like all the cctv footage of um sasha's apartment complex so do i need to change the photo yep sorry i have gone on Okay, so um, so this is the security guard. His name is Stephen Duxbury, and he was the security guard that was on um, on that evening of the seventeenth of October, two thousand and fifteen, um, when Sasha was murdered. Um, he went in for interview and he told the um, police that Sasha was trying to get into the building. He said she didn't have her phone or key fab and, he, and she also couldn't remember her code. Sorry. I'm going to just change the photos. I don't know if you can see them very well. Um, Goddess White, hello, beautiful. I hope you're okay. Um, yeah, so he said that she couldn't remember her code to get in. He said she was very intoxicated and I took her to the car, to her car, to see if she'd left her key or, um, like, the key fab that lets the code, like, lets her in for the code. I'm just going to change the... So there's Sasha. She's um, walking around the building. There's um, Stephen Duxbury, the security guard, guiding Sasha out to her car. And this is what Stephen Duxbury's story was um, saying to the police. So he said that he'd um, took Sasha outside to the garage, to her car, to see if her keys were in there. And then he said all of a sudden sasha remembered that her key um that she remembered the code so that's when they came back in and he then said that he'd never see her again so when sasha said that she'd remembered the code after them coming back in he said in his statement to the police that he'd never saw Sasha again after after this instance of her going out and remembering her code to get back in. So the police then looked at the CCTV cameras from the attic nightclub and watched as Sasha walked to get home. Sorry, everyone. Pardon, Callum? Pardon? Sorry about this, everybody. Okay, yeah, so the police um, looked at the CCTV cameras from the attic nightclub and watched as Sasha walked um, home. 
they 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 see that Asher was um oh, Callum, you're putting me off, darling, and I'm trying to do a live. It's an actual live, not a video. Um this is children with ADHD, everybody. And yeah, so they they could see that Sasha was so easy to spot out on the CCTV cameras as well, because Sasha was wearing white jeans, which was which made it a lot more easier for them to sort of spot her out on the night vision on the CCTV. Um, so they followed um, Sasha as she came out of the attic nightclub and they followed her. So it would have it would have took her like 10 blocks, they said, to get her like eventually home from the attic nightclub. And they followed her up the road a bit. And on one part of the CCTV footage, they spotted a car pulling up beside Sasha. And in the car, there was like a group of males. You could see there was a group of males in there. And then from like Sasha walking from behind, two women um, linked Sasha's arms and they walked her off up the road a bit. And as they walked off up the road the police couldn't like get any more cctv on sasha from from that part to like her getting home so they would lost like sasha being in the cctv so what they done the next day they put out an appeal like an an appeal um on the news and they asked if the two females um, would remember themselves and remember seeing a woman dressed in white jeans and a purple top. And would they remember like linking her? And the two women that did, they actually came forward and they went in for their interview and they actually said that they felt um, because Sasha was like very drunk, they sort of took her under their wings and made sure she was safe. So she, they sort of pulled her away from the men that were in the car and she, they got into an Uber taxi with her. And as they got to Sasha's apartment complex, Sasha said, oh, this is where I live. And she sort of jumped out. And the girls, you know, sort of said to the police officers, we just wanted to get her home safe. So, like, their story's all checked out. And, and you know, that is what happened. They checked, like, the taxi and everything just sort of tallied. Um, I've gone off my paperwork again because I've done it as I've remembered. Um, yeah, so now I don't need a photo. Yeah, so so now they've gone back to like Sasha's phone on her laptop, and they remember that her last message was to a guy called Ben. So they actually get like in contact with Ben and he actually comes in for interview. He sits down with them and he explains that him and Sasha are like were old time flames. They were still in contact. Um, she did message him at five o'clock um, just saying Ben, but he tried to call her back the next day and there was no response. Um, they asked if he would do a DNA test and he said, yeah. And, you know, he passed, he, that wasn't his DNA. And they also contacted Sasha's ex-boyfriend because they felt like being strangulation, sometimes it's a crime of passion. Um, they contacted her ex-boyfriend who came in and he explained that he was with a friend all evening. He'd done the same DNA and it wasn't his DNA. And his story 
tallied, you know, he wasn't there. So I'm going to go through the timing now because I've left it on Sasha coming back into her apartment. And so at 1.46 a.m., on the CCTV now, because the police have got the CCT footage to Sasha's apartment complex. And at 1.46, they see Sasha going into, an, into the building with another man. And they can hear the man asking Sasha if she was okay. And Sasha replies, yes. But further along the CCTV footage, they see that he's just a resident that was just showing concern. And at 2.06, you see Sasha running around and like you, you can hear like her running and her flip flops that she's wearing a sort of like, you know, on the ground, you can hear them. And at 2.25 a.m., they see Sasha again, but this time she's with Stephen Duxbury, the security guard. They see them both walking out and in from the car park, like he explained. And, you know, they sort of then go, well, okay, his story checks out. So they're now sort of like, sitting there watching the CCTV and going, okay, well, this guy, you know, Stephen Duxbury, the security guard, his story now is checking out as well. So they're a bit like, like confused now because they've gone through the CCTV camera and they haven't seen anybody else with Sasha, no other resident or non-resident coming in following her so they're they're really stunned at this point they're sort of like you know there's no forced entry you know who is it sort of thing and i'm gonna try this um don i was wondering beautiful if i mute myself would you let me know if it if it echoes when I play the CCTV footage, because that's what I'm going to get to when I get to the end in a minute. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this one and come back on. Here we go, the plane's going on. So let's go to the room. Okay. Okay, so let's go to this there. I'm going to mute me. Before I mute me, I'm just going to um, say, I'm just going to play this CCTV um, quickly because it just explains what I've said. I'm going to skip through it because there's quite a lot of it. And then I'm going to get to the end of it because the police are now sort of a bit stuck in like who it could be. So,
Sorry about that. Um, I didn't know if it was, yeah, echoey a bit. Um, and I think that's the actual one on that, though. It is echoey when I listen to it without, like, putting it on here. So it's, like, the only one I could find, and it was echoey already. It was, like, oh. But, um, yeah, so, like, his story then, like, obviously checked out with the police. And then so they sort of, like, think, you know, who who is it? Who could it have been? And then I'm just going to play one more bit of the footage and then I'm nearly done. I don't know whether you can see, but that is the security guard, Stephen Duxbury. And at 6.36, he was carrying out two bin bags. And the police then sort of thought, hang on, because he said his shift finished at 6 a.m. So they then went back to the security firm and asked if it was in his job description to take out any rubbish and they said he was one of the security guards that would always moan at residents for, for like not taking their 
rubbish out and you know he wouldn't do it so he would be the one moaning i'm just gonna stop this yeah so he would be the one um oh, it's gone on to that. yeah so he would be the one that would moan about it so they then um noticed on the bin bags as well that they were the exact bin bags that had come out of Sasha's apartment because they had red like tie bits on them that you could tie together and that is what Sasha had in her apartment so they went back So they, I'm going just grab six loads. Um, no, 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 six loads. So sorry. Yeah. So then they went back um, and brought Stephen Duxbury back in for more questioning. I I need to change my photo. So they went back and brought Stephen Duxbury back in for questioning. And when they brought him back in, they noticed that he had um, bruising, like real, like, like someone had been like defending themselves, you know, from him on his arms. He had bruise marks, like hand, finger, like print marks in his arms. Um, they also asked him if he would do a um, polygraph test. He, he said that he would. And when he done the test, the needle, they said, would jump off the scales when he was asked about Sasha. And they asked if she was strangled. The needle done the same. It went off the scales because they hadn't disclosed that any, like Sasha had been strangled at that point. So, you know, it was showing them that, you know, he knew. They asked if he would give a DNA test and he said yes. And he done the DNA sample and when they got the DNA sample back, it was a match um that was found on sasha and was also found on her toilet seat and on stephen's phone when they brought his phone in and went through his phone they found a search on there on how to defeat like defect a, a digital lock so he also looked up how he could like defect her lock sort of thing um, after he'd got in. Um, yeah, I'm nearly done, sorry. Hello, Donna Beautiful, you still there, babe? <laughs> I'm nearly finished, bless you. I just have a little bit of my dream. Nearly done. Yeah, so... Stephen Duxbury was arrested for the murder of Sasha and went to trial in November 2017. The jury took four hours to give their verdict on Stephen Duxbury and he was found guilty and convicted of two first degree murders and convicted to sexual battery with physical force and burglary. He was sentenced to two life sentencing sentences
for the first degree murders and rape. And he also got an, an, an additional 15 years for burglary. And so he should do as well. He should never be released, I think. That's my opinion. I think if he was to ever be released, he'd do it again. Um, I just feel, yeah. Um, yeah, Stephen Duxbury is an evil man in my eyes and he should never be released, ever. You know, Sasha should have felt safe in her, in her own home and, you know, especially from someone who should have been protecting her and, you know, making sure she was safe and not brutally murdering her. Um, yeah, I just think he's an evil man and... Um, you know, like I said before, if he was ever to be released, I think he would do it again. Um, I'm going to leave it with Sasha, bless her. Um, Sasha was a beautiful, bubbly, hard-working lady woman. She really was. And she enjoyed every moment of her life. And she loved everyone and anything. And she will never be forgotten. She was so beautiful. And, yeah, I'm going to leave it where I come on. And if I can get on again... Yeah, Sasha's favourite colour was red, hence the red tonight. Um, I don't normally do red like purple, but yeah. Um, yeah, bless her. Um, she was a beautiful woman and um, yeah, she, rest in peace, Sasha, you know. But thank you all for coming in and being in my live with me tonight. It means a lot and big love to you all. Um, big love, peace out. A hundred percent, Donna. I was thinking that when I was researching, America's sentencing is like it's a sentence, you know, it, it beats UK any day. I mean, they, yeah, yeah, definitely love you, beautiful. Um, but yeah, rest in peace, Sasha. Big love. Peace out.